The free electron theory of metals aims to explain the structure and properties of solids through their electronic structure. The electron theory is applicable to all solids, that is both metals and non-metals. It explains the electrical, thermal and magnetic properties of solids, etc. The theory has been developed in three main stages. So first is the classical free electron theory. Drude and Lorentz proposed this theory in 1900. According to this theory, the metals containing that free electrons obey the laws of classical mechanics. The treatment of a metal as containing a gas of electrons completely free to move within it. The theory describes and correlates the electrical and thermal properties of metals. Later, quantum mechanics became the basis of the theory of most of the general properties of simple metals such as sodium with one free electron per atom, magnesium with two and aluminium with three. Tradition metals such as iron have partially free electronic D states and are not treated by the free electron model. The valence electrons are involved in electrical conduction in metals and alloys. Valence electrons become free in solids and move about randomly within the solids in the same way molecules in a gas confined to a container. Hence, they are known as free electrons. Neglecting the electron-electron interaction and the electron-ion interaction, it is similar to situation that electrons undergo periodic collision with ions in the lattice. So this was about classical free electron theory. Now let's see the quantum free electron theory. Sommerfeld in 1928 applied the principles of quantum mechanics to classical free electron theory. According to classical theory, the free electrons in a metal have random motions with equal probability in all directions. But according to quantum theory, the free electrons occupy different energy levels, up to Fermi level at 0 degree Kelvin. So they possess different energies and hence they possess different velocities. The different velocities of these free electrons of a metal can be seen in velocity space. So let's see some assumptions. According to the quantum free electron theory, the assumptions are as follows. The energies of free electrons are quantized. The distribution of electrons is as per the Pauli's exclusion principle. Electrons travel under constant potential and confined to the boundaries of metal. All the attractive and repulsive forces are neglected. Electrons on this energy level are also called fermions and obey Pauli's exclusion principle. Each energy level can accommodate at most two electrons. This highest occupied energy level by the electron at zero Kelvin is called Fermi energy level. At zero Kelvin energy levels, below the Fermi level are completely filled and above Fermi level all the energy levels are empty. If the temperature increases above 0 Kelvin, the probability occupation of electrons at that level is half. That particular energy of that level is called Fermi energy. The value of Fermi energy in metal is about 5 electron volt. According to the quantum free electron theory, the motion of free electron in metals is shown in this animated figure as per Drude model. Drude model, the electrons shown in red, constantly bounce between heavier stationary crystal ions shown in blue. So this is all about the classical and quantum free electron theory which is very basic information about that. Now let's see the definitions and some relations. First of all, drift velocity. The drift velocity is defined as the average velocity acquired by the free electrons of a metal in a particular direction by the application of electric field. Relaxation time, second definition, it is defined as the time taken by the free electrons 
to reach its equilibrium position from the disturbed position in the presence of electric field. Next one is collision time. Collision time defined as the average time taken by the free electrons between two successive collisions. Current density. Current density is defined as the magnitude of current passing through unit area. So capital J is equal to capital I upon capital A. So J is a current density, I is a current and capital A is the area. So this equation can be written as I is equal to integration of J into dS. Now let's see the expression for relaxation time tau r. When the metal is subjected to an external electric field, the electrons move opposite to the applied field. After removal of electric field, the drift velocity decays exponentially with the help of the equation Vd is equal to V0 exponential of minus tau upon tau r where V0 is the initial velocity of an electron before application of electric field and tau r is the relaxation time. If tau is equal to tau r then Vd is equal to V0 exponential of minus 1 or this equation we can write Vd is equal to V0 upon E. Thus the relaxation time may be stated as the time taken for the drift velocity to decay to 1 upon E of its original initial value. Now let's see the mean free path denoted by lambda. Free electrons in a metal are continuously moving in all directions and with various speeds. They frequently collide with one another. Therefore, they move in straight line with constant speeds between two successive collisions. The distance traveled by the electron between two successive collisions is called as free path and their mean is called the mean free path. The average distance traveled by the electron between two successive collisions is called mean free path or the mean free path is the average distance traveled by an electron between two successive collisions with other free electrons. Therefore, lambda can be written as lambda is equal to c bar tau where c bar is the mean square velocity of electron which can be written as c bar is equal to under root of 3 kb t upon m where kb is the Boltzmann constant, t is the temperature and m is a mass of an electron. Now let's see the success of free electron theory. The free electron theory was successful in explaining properties of metals as below. The theory successfully explains Ohm's law. Electrical conductivity of metal, it explains electrical conductivities of metals that is the electrical conductivity that is sigma is equal to n e mu where n is the electron density, e is a charge on electron and mu is the mobility of electrons. The thermal conductivity, it explains thermal conductivity of metals at lower temperatures. Thermal conductivity of metals that is capital K is equal to Kb n v lambda divided by 2 where Kb is the Boltzmann's constant. The free electron theory also explains the relation between electrical and thermal conductivity which is called as Widman-Frange law. The Widman-Frange law states that the ratio of the thermal conductivity and the electrical conductivity of metal is proportional to the temperature. It can be shown that capital L is equal to small k upon sigma t where k is a Boltzmann constant, sigma is a conductivity and capital T is a temperature is equal to 2.44 times 10 raised to minus 8 watt ohm per Kelvin square. This number is called as Lorentz number. Even though free electron theory successfully explained the thermal and electrical properties, there are several limitations of free electron theory. So let's see these limitations. According to the theory, 
कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ मेटर्स इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इफ दिस इज ऑलवेज ट्रू डायवेलेंट कैडमियम जिंक एटसेट्रा एंड ट्राइवेलेंट एल्यूमिनियम एटसेट्रा एटम्स शुड हैव मोर इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी देन मोनोवेलेंट एटम्स लाइक कॉपर सिल्वर एटसेट्रा दिस मॉडल कैन नॉट एक्सप्लेन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सॉलिड्स इन टू कंडक्टर्स सेमी कंडक्टर्स एंड इंसुलेटर्स the theoretical values of mean free path of electrons as calculated from this theory do not agree with the experimental values the theoretical values of specific heat and electronic specific heat as calculated from this theory do not agree with experimental values some metals such as zinc have positive values of hall effect this theory could not explain why zinc and other metals have positive value of hall coefficient widman french lord davids at low temperature so these are the limitations of a free electron theory